Hello Green Stylers, Cynthia here, and today I will be sewing up the Alta sweatshirt dress with you. Follow along with me to sew your Alta dress from start to finish, or use the hyperlinks in the video description to skip to the step that you'd like to see. Here are the pieces that you'll need to cut to make your very own Alta dress. You'll need to cut one front piece. Make sure to cut out or mark those notches on the arm side. That'll be important when it comes to attaching the sleeves. Use piece A3 for the asymmetrical that's shown here, or piece B1 for the symmetrical version. You'll need to cut out the back of the dress. If you're doing the asymmetrical version like this shown here, you'll need to cut out pieces A1 and A2. These pieces are different, so make sure you cut out one of each, and also make sure that your fabric is facing the same direction that it was when you cut out the front. So if your fabric was right side up on the table when you cut out the front, make sure it's right side up on the table for both back pieces. Be sure to mark those notches on the arm side. If you're making the symmetrical version, cut out two of piece B2 mirror images of each other. Cut out two sleeves as mirror images of each other, piece S1. Be sure to cut out those darts and mark the highlighted area around the dart. Also be sure to cut out those notches or mark them on each piece. You can cut long sleeves that are shown here, or use the short sleeve cut line to make a short sleeve dress. In addition, you can choose between hemmed or cuffed sleeves, so be sure to cut on the line that corresponds to your choice. If you'll be making the welt pocket, you'll need to cut two of piece B3 mirror images, and that is called the welt pocket piece. You'll want to transfer the rectangular markings from your pattern piece onto the wrong side of your fabric. In addition, you'll need to cut one of piece B4, the welt pocket liner. Keep in mind that this fabric will be seen slightly when your pocket is open, and also you want to use something with minimal stretch and that'll prevent the pocket from sagging on the inside of your dress. If you're making the kangaroo pocket, you'll need one of piece B5, kangaroo pocket. The simplest finish for your neck opening is the standard neck band. Cut one of piece B9 for this option. If you're making the crossover funnel neck option, cut two of piece B7 mirror images. One will be the main piece and one will be the lining piece. Be sure to cut out or mark the notches on both pieces, and on the main piece you'll want to transfer the markings for the grommets. I'll show you how to choose which grommet holes to use in the crossover funnel neck section of the video. If you're choosing to cuff your sleeves, you'll need to cut out two of piece H2 mirror images. And finally, you'll need to cut out your hem band pieces. For the asymmetrical version, cut out two of piece A4 cut as mirror images. For the symmetrical version, cut out two of piece H1. For the hem bands, you can either use rib knit as I'm doing here, or you can use the same fabric that you used for the main portion of your dress. We'll begin construction with the kangaroo pocket. If you're making the welt pocket, you can just skip ahead to the welt pocket section or use the hyperlink in the video description. We begin by folding those angled edges toward the wrong side of the kangaroo pocket. You'll see that this edge will line up perfectly with the edge of the pocket if you fold right along that notch. I did an iron for a nice crisp edge. Take it over to your cover stitch or sewing machine and stitch with a cover stitch, zigzag, or twin needle. When it's all stitched up it will look something like this. You can barely see my white thread in there but it is stitched down. So now we're going to fold the other edges in one half inch. And what I like to do is take my acrylic ruler and draw a line one inch along all of these edges. Then once the lines are drawn, you'll simply fold the raw edge of the fabric toward the wrong side, line up the raw edge with the line that you drew, and that will be a one half inch fold. 
fold them and iron them all in. Once they're all ironed, they'll look something like this. My folds won't seem to stay in place, but at least I've ironed those creases in so that I can easily fold them back. Transfer the location of the kangaroo pocket from the pattern piece onto your fabric. This is water disappearing ink, so all I have to do is get it wet and that ink will disappear. Align your pocket with the markings, then step back to take a look, make sure you like how it looks, and then pin it in place. You'll use a top stitch, which is a slightly lengthened straight stitch, to attach the pocket to the dress at these points the top edge, the two short side edges, and the bottom edge. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of each stitch to lock them in place. If you haven't already, mark the welch pocket placement on the front of your dress. Iron on interfacing to the wrong side of the welt pocket pieces and redraw those welt pocket markings onto the pocket piece. We'll put the pocket piece right sides facing with the front of the dress and line up those pocket placement markings. After you carefully lined up the pocket piece, pin it in place. Repeat for the other pocket piece and you can double check that you've placed the pocket pieces correctly because that bottom edge angles downward. Now head on over to your sewing machine to stitch these pockets. Going to be stitching right along these lines that we've drawn. Get your sewing machine, set it to a straight stitch at the regular length. Go ahead and drop your needle now because you'll want it down to make those nice crisp corners and start stitching exactly along that line. When you get to the end, go slowly and just stitch one stitch at a time to stop exactly at the corner. When you get to the corner, lift your foot with your needle down and turn the fabric. Then you can put your foot back down and then carefully stitch to the other corner and repeat around all corners. Be sure to back stitch at the end, trim off your threads, and your pocket will look like this. Now we'll cut the pocket open with a straight line through the center. Start half an inch up from the bottom, and you can see I marked two little dots, one a half inch from the top and one half inch from the bottom. When you get a half inch from the top, cut two diagonal lines from the center to the corners and it'll be a V shape. Clip as closely as possible to those corners without clipping your stitching. And when you're done clipping, it will look like this. Now push the entire pocket piece through that opening that you just made. Carefully fix the edges and iron it so that you get a nice, neat pocket opening. Thank you. 
Now lift and fold the pocket piece over toward the side seam and give it a nice press. Now we'll fold it back toward the center, but we'll leave just enough of it to cover that pocket opening. So we'll create a new fold and a new crease that will butt right up against this edge. Press that new fold very well. Flip the whole thing over so now you have the right side facing up and you're going to lift the bottom edge, ignore my pins, those are unnecessary, lift the bottom edge until you see that little triangle mark there, that little point from where you cut the pocket opening. You are going to stitch that point to the pocket. So pin it in place and repeat with the other three triangle points. Here you can see that the triangle points at the top and bottom of each pocket are pinned in place and now we're going to stitch those on our sewing machine. When you stitch it you want to make sure that you don't stitch the front of the shirt. You're only stitching through layers of the pocket. Using a straight stitch on your sewing machine you'll Stitch back and forth a couple of times over that triangle. Stitch as closely as possible to where the front of the dress is folded up, just being very careful that you don't actually stitch the front of the dress. Repeat for the other three triangles at the pocket openings. This is what our welt pocket looks like so far. We've got the triangles stitched at the bottom and at the top. The center of the welt pockets is still unattached and the sides are unattached as well. Our next step is to attach the welt pockets at the center. So in order to do that, we will fold the dress in half with right sides together in order to pin those two edges of the pocket together, you may want to move your dress out of the way so you don't accidentally get it pinned in there. Line up those raw edges and pin them together. Use a straight stitch and a 3 8 inch seam allowance to stitch these two pocket pieces together. While we're at the machine, we'll go ahead and top stitch around that pocket opening. So we will stitch right around this edge, the outer edge of the pocket, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge using a straight stitch that is slightly lengthened. I don't show it, but I usually set my stitch length to 3.0 for top stitching. In case you're wondering about the foot that I'm using, this is called a walking foot. It is a great addition to your sewing toolbox. You can attach to your sewing machine. And the neat thing about the walking foot is that it has feed dogs right up on top of the foot. So you have feed dogs working up on top and underneath your fabric. So it helps move your fabric through the machine more evenly and smoothly. And just like when you were initially stitching the pocket, 
be very careful when you get up to the corners. Stitch very slowly on those last few stitches to make sure they land exactly where you want. Put your needle down and then lift your foot in order to turn your fabric. Press that center seam so it's open and nice and flat. And now we will pin the pocket liner onto the welt pocket piece. And here I want to talk to you a little bit about the fabric that you use for the pocket liner. As I mentioned in the pieces to cut, keep in mind that when you choose this fabric, it will be seen a little bit through the opening of your welt pocket. It should be a very small amount, but still you want to choose something that will be a color you want seen through the pocket opening. In addition, I recommend using a stable knit that's not too heavy. You don't want something that will be weighing down and dragging down this pocket. And you also don't want anything that's going to stretch too much and allow your pocket to sag. If you look through your stash and the only fabric that you have and want to use for that liner is something that is very stretchy and very unstable, consider stabilizing it with some interfacing or even adding some clear elastic to the top edge when you stitch the two pieces together. I actually changed this fabric out when I was unhappy with my pocket results and used a flannel that worked well. The only thing with the flannel is that you then have to go in and finish those raw edges. So those are some things for you to keep in mind when choosing the fabric for this piece. Here's a view of the flannel piece that I ended up using after I took my dress apart and redid it. We're going to use a straight stitch on our sewing machine to attach these pieces together. Because of the amount of ease on the dress and the way that you put the dress on and off, you, you shouldn't be needing to stretch this piece at all. So, so a lengthened straight stitch should work just fine. I used a stitch length of 3.0, which is my top stitching length. As we attach it, we just wanna make sure, just like before, that we don't stitch on the fabric of the front of the dress. So I position the pieces so that the dress part is sitting up top and I can see very clearly where the dress is and make sure that I don't stitch on top of it. Now, if you used a woven fabric like I did for the pocket liner, go back and do a zigzag stitch to finish those raw edges. Now we'll make one more stitch to secure that pocket liner and keep your pocket from hanging open. See how mine's already trying to gape open? And we'll stitch right on top of the top stitching that we did before. And this is the top stitching right along that vertical line closer to the side seam. So I'm going to pin through all of the layers to make sure that it's sitting exactly how I want it when I make this stitch. Drop your needle down right on top of the previous stitching. Use a back stitch to lock it in place and stitch right along that top stitching so that it looks like it's still just one line of stitching. As you can see, it already looks better. My pocket doesn't want to hang open like it did before.
Now we'll make the darts on our sleeves. The darts are really nice because they help give your sleeve a much better fit. Make sure you've either marked or cut out those notches and also cut out the dart. In addition, you'll want to make sure you've drawn that V-shaped marking around the dart. This is your stitch line for the dart and you can find it as the shaded area on your pattern piece. Begin by folding your sleeve with right sides together right along the V of that dart. Pin in place and then take it over to your sewing machine. Stitch right along your marked stitch line and that is a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Stitch at the beginning to lock your stitches in place and stitch right along that line all the way to the point. Once you get to the point, you'll stitch right off of the fabric. Do not back stitch at this point, but rather make a couple of extra stitches off of the fabric. Pull the thread tails and clip them along so that you can tie them into knots. And you'll be tying the knots off of the fabric since your stitching ended off the fabric. You can see it hanging off the end there. Once you've tied a few knots, clip it off. At this point, you can simply press the seam allowance toward the front of the dress, or you can use your small pointy scissors to clip open the remainder of the dart and then press the seam open. Now that we've taken care of a lot of the details, we'll really get into the meat of this dress. We're going to attach the front, sleeves, and back. Here's the front piece with the single notches, and we'll get our sleeve pieces and find those single notches and pin them with right sides together onto the front. So you'll have one sleeve on each arm side of the front. Now stitch these two seams using a stretch stitch or your serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And here they are all stitched up. So now we need to put the back pieces together. Take your two back pieces and lay them on your table with right sides up. And then we're going to flip one over the other one and align that center seam. Pin it in place. And again, we'll use a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Like a lightning bolt stitch on this seam because it can be ironed open and flat. Now we'll be attaching the arm side with these double notches to the sleeves. Bring back the other piece that you've already constructed. And on the bottom is the front of the dress and on the sides are those sleeves. So we're gonna be working with these double notches here. Bring your back piece over that you've just stitched up and with right sides together match up the back piece arm side with those sleeves matching double notches. Add as many pins as you need and once you've pinned both sleeves to the back piece, you'll stitch those two seams with a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And now here's our dress all laid out with the wrong side facing up. Here's the front 
and the two sleeves and the back. Now we're going to pick up the dress by the sleeves, shake it out, and we're going to pin along those side seams all the way from the wrist all the way down to the bottom of the hem. We'll stitch these two long seams using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you made the welt pocket, make sure to include the welt pocket in that side seam stitch. Now before you begin construction on your crossover funnel neck or crossover hood, you need to decide which markings you want to use for your grommets. This strategy will help you decide which markings will give you the look you desire. Take one of your pieces, the main piece with the grommet markings on it, and fold it over on your table just like so. Line up one of your points with the notch and then fold over at that notch. Now you have the funnel neck piece folded just as it will be when you're wearing it, so you can see where the notches lay. You can choose to use two grommet markings on one side like Rachel did to create this unique look. Or you can choose to use two top grommet markings like Dana did to create this classic look. The only combination that you can't choose are two of the bottom grommets because one will be hidden behind a fold of fabric if you did that. And finally you can choose to use a bottom grommet on one side and top grommet on the other side in order to achieve this trendy offset look like I did. Make note of your chosen grommet placement and then reinforce those areas with a square of iron-on interfacing. I used Pellin SF101. After that, you'll place your grommets. As a reminder, the grommets will only go on your main funnel neck or hood piece. Here's mine with a piece of iron-on interfacing attached, and I started to cut out the little hole to attach my grommet. Follow the instructions on your grommets when you attach them. And here is the side with my grommet already attached. And I like to go ahead and stitch a little square around my grommet opening. That's not necessary, but I like the stability it adds. And here they are. I'll go ahead and add some water to erase those other markings. Bring over your funnel neck lining piece, which is the same as the main piece, and lay them with right sides together. Clip the rounded side and you'll stitch it with a stretch stitch or serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once it's all stitched up, it will look like this. And we'll turn it so that the right sides are out. You can also press that edge to make it nice and crisp. Next we'll create a casing for the drawstring by stitching one and a quarter inches from that finished rounded edge. I've marked it with blue here so you can see exactly where you'll be stitching. For this stitch I'll be using a straight stitch with a 3.0 stitch length. Just a quick note, if you chose to put both grommet openings on one side, you'll want to thread your drawstring now, baste the ends to the seam allowance at the end of the casing before moving on to the next step. Now we're going to cross over the funnel neck, but before doing so, I'm going to go ahead and pin that bottom edge of mine because those layers want to curl up. Once you've done that, locate the notch on your piece. There's the notch on mine, and what we want to do is fold the bottom edge over to the notch so that that point just meets the notch. Pin it in place. And now we'll fold the other side over at that same point and pin those layers in place. And 
now we can see one crossover point on the outside and then if we look on the inside we can see the other crossover point. We're going to baste from point to point. I'll actually continue basting all the way around since those edges did want to curl. It'll just make it easier when I attach to the dress. But here is our beautiful crossover. This step is the same for the crossover funnel, the regular stand-up funnel, and also the hood. Begin by finding the front center on your piece, the back center, and then the two quarter points on the side. I took my crossover piece and just folded it right at those points in order to find the front center. The opposite end is the back center. Meet those points up in order to find the two other quarter points. Find and mark the quarter points on your dress neckline as well. You can use a marker like I did or use pins to mark those quarter points. Once you've found them all, You'll take your dress wrong side out on your table, place your funnel neck or hood inside of the neck opening, matching up the quarter points. Pin them all in place and add additional pins if necessary. Stitch in place using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And if you know me or my videos, you know I'll be basting it first. If you're finishing the neck opening with a neckband, it uses standard neckband construction. Take the neckband piece and put it right sides together aligning the short edge and stitch with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Fold the entire neckband in half, aligning the long raw edges and with wrong sides together. Find and mark the quarter points on the neckband as you fold it. Find and mark the quarter points on the neckband as well. Fold it in half to find the center front and center back, and then align those two pins, folding in half to find the other two quarter points along the shoulders. Then pin the neckband to the right side of the dress, aligning the pins and raw edges. Make sure you match the seam of the neckband with the back center of the dress. You may find it useful to put additional pins on the neckband. Stretch the neckband evenly and then pinch in between the two pins and add another one. Go around and add as many pins as you need to feel comfortable stitching. Stitch the neckband to the dress using a stretch stitch or serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but as always I will be basting mine on first.
check the seam to make sure it looks even and smooth and if you basted you can now go back and stitch over with a stretch stitch or serger. If you're hemming the sleeves, you can go ahead and hem those now. I'll be adding the hem band and the sleeve cuffs at the same time for this next step. Here you see the asymmetrical hem band, but you can also follow along if you are using the regular hem band. Pin the pieces on the side edges with right sides together. For the sleeve cuffs, we'll fold each one in half with right sides together and aligning the long curved edges. Pin those in place. Stitch all four of these edges using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We'll fold these pieces in half with wrong sides facing each other and because the fabric is a nice thick rib knit, I don't want to fold this seam over on top of itself. I'd rather nest two seams next to each other. So what I'm going to do is snip into the seam, just making sure that I don't clip that left needle thread. And that way I can push one part of the seam to the left and one part of the seam to the right and have them nest next to each other inside the piece. Pin at the seams and also find the center front and center back, marking those spots with pins as well. And do the same for the two sleeve cuff pieces. Now we'll pin these pieces to the dress. If you're doing the asymmetrical version, make sure the taller side of the hem band goes with the shorter side of the dress, but the longer side of the dress goes with the shorter side of the hem band. Flip the hem band so it's upside down and the same side of the hem band is still aligned with the same side of the dress and you'll slip the hem band over the dress with the right side of the dress touching the right side of the hem band. Match up the raw edges and the quarter markings and pin in place. Now we'll pin the sleeve cuffs to the ends of the sleeves. The seam of the cuff will match up with the seam of the sleeve. And you can also add an additional pin to the opposite side of the cuff and the opposite side of the sleeve from the seam. Slip the cuff over the sleeve with right sides touching. You're going to align the raw edges and match up those pins.
stitch these all in place using a stretch stitch or serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And here's how they will look when you are done. And you're all done. Congratulations on completing your very own green style Alta sweatshirt dress. Now you need to figure out the options that you'll make for your next one. We can't wait to see your Alta dresses, so please be sure to share on social media, including our green style Facebook group and on Instagram using hashtag GSAlta. Happy sewing from all of us at Green Style.